right, click the links for Odyssey and bitch you join the channel, become a valued member, or support channel on Coffee Crypto or through the other means. Definitely get on Odyssey. Everyone is on Odyssey. I cannot recommend that enough because the censorship on YouTube is off the hook. Okay, so YouTube destroyed a bunch of the Red Pillars channels, but also destroyed the moderate left. I went on this nostalgia trip last night. I saw some, I don't know how I got on this very nearly viral, it was an old YouTube channel, um, which led me to channels like Poisoning the Well, Joy Sparkles, Onision, Jeff Holiday, Till Deer, Dire Wolf, um, Ranting Monkey, Barbara for you to see, like all that stuff from five years ago, and a ton of other channels. Most are off the air or had to change their formats so radically that their new channels are not really anything but like travel blogs or video game channels. Uh, they're like the alt light or alt, the alt light right or the alt left light, which is like what are you? It's just worthless and boring. And some of those channels are very successful, like the guy who who rolls around in his chair. Uh, he used to, I think, talk about SGWs, but he's he's on the left himself, and like he read the writing on the YouTube walls. Like I can't really talk about SGWs anymore. So I think he does video game reviews. It's it's successful, but it's like the channel's not really about anything. It's just about video games and. It's just something, I think it's just something that people are putting on in the background. It's, you know, the guy's got a million subs, and I'm, you know, I'm not, not the one who should be talking about it. But it's, it, like, at one time, a lot of these channels were talking about real things, even if they were talking about real things in kind of a light way. Anyway, so some destroyed themselves with Trump derangement syndrome, uh, like poisoning the well and very nearly viral, which is a shame to see, because both those channels have, like, a lot of... Uh, a lot of potential uh, in doing these YouTube skits, which is what YouTube was like five years ago. They had a few videos that were against Trump and Hugo Boss types, which, you know, they call everyone that. And that were pro-open borders, which was probably the real problem. And their audience just disappeared. A lot of them are actual left-wingers who are laughing, who were laughing at SGWs. That was a lot of those channels um, back then. But Trump derangement syndrome broke some of them. It just broke them. And they, I think they thought that their audience would be on board with being anti-Trump. Um, but their audience was across the spectrum. Or maybe was more right of center than they thought. Because it seems like they lost they lost their audience. Because those two channels haven't posted <clears throat> haven't posted anything in a year. So I think they, they did. Their, their audience probably was right of center. And then some... I the thing is, even if we don't like Trump ourselves that much for whatever reasons, we don't need someone else to who doesn't seem... who seems like they're a light pop culture channel to start talking about politics when it doesn't seem like they're really into um, into politics in the first place. Anyway, so they, they a lot of these channels read the writing on the YouTube wall. YouTube started shutting down right-of-center content or even left-wing people who were anti-SJWs. That was like the, the shoe-on-head channels and... I don't even remember. There was that black guy who... Uh, I don't know. There was a bunch of those channels. So the channels had to drop it or they had to do something else. And a lot of them turned out to be literally on the left. But they weren't insane. They just weren't naive. They, they're just, you know, young and naive. It's like, how many times do you need your car broken into you before you start voting Republican? Ask those San Francisco liberals. Or how many home invasions do you need to see on social media before you go beyond the normie Republicans to, you know, whatever is else is out there? So if you're isolated or wealthy, you can be a liberal. If you're in the thick of it, uh, you're probably going to be more tribalist or nationalist or something. And, you know, now that I think about it, you hear that term, the Trump curse. And there's a really long list of people who went up, not really directly against Trump so much, but against the concept of him and, like, the people who were behind him, which was a lot of times were just normie people. That's the Trump curse is they they went after him or his his people, and it's like they just kind of shot themselves in the foot. Because a lot of them were bad people. And if you're a bad person, the last thing you want is a spotlight uh, shined Shined on you, shown on you, brought to bear upon your countenance. Because it's going to highlight, uh, like a lot of those guys, Avenetti was one of them. It turns out to be all these guys are like, I got the feeling a lot of these these lawyer types were pharmaceutically enhanced. And, and when you start going down that path, you get kind of sloppy with things and you think you're unstoppable. And you don't realize, like, the media is wa scrutinizing every little thing you do. And, and you've got this, like, pharmaceutical false sense of you're untouchable. And the next thing you know, the FBI is kicking down your door at 3 a.m. So some of these these channels suffer from the, the Trump curse. 
they were like light, light pop culture channels, skit chan- channels, and you know they were fun for what they were. It's like you just all you had to do was stay out of politics and just you would have been fine. They got into the anti-Trump, the anti-nationalist stuff, and their audience just absolutely floated away. But to be fair, they got screwed by YouTube. They started doing YouTube, and they were using it as a part-time job, and it was a fun job. Then YouTube started destroying those channels, either outright or by demonetizing them or hiding them in the algorithm. At that point, like, yeah, you might as well just start a new channel. And when these channels got destroyed, um, BitChute was in place, but it wasn't monetized. You're working on donations, which is, like, friggin' impossible to get, though I appreciate those who have. But Odyssey is monetized, and but Odyssey just wasn't in place at the time. And, like, a lot of the channels, if they came to Odyssey, they'd probably do just fine. So... The thing is, whether I disagree with the left-wing channels or not, they did get screwed um, by YouTube. And there's kind of a, a legal concept of detrimental reliance there if you're talking like just strictly according to the law or ethics. But it doesn't apply because Google's the biggest company on earth. You don't you don't litigate against those kind of companies. You just find an alternative platform. Um, so some of this was that they were left-wing, but maybe were isolated from the, I'll say, malum in se acts that were pushing people to the right. People aren't, aren't just... Um, you, you know, goose stepping for for no reason. They're you know they're not they're, they're seeing what's out there, and there's a reason they're going to the right. And, you know, if you live off in a village in Ireland or whatever, wherever some of these channels were living, and you're not watching the alt media that reports the actual events in a city, then you might be stuck in kind of this 1990s liberalism where you really have no clue how bad things have gotten. People are finding content, like there's an Odyssey channel, Media to Rise, which got an interview with uh, Mr. Brooks. Um, I think they got the first interview with Mr. Brooks. And uh, there's kind of a media blackout on that. Really strange. But you can go on Odyssey and you can watch it, that interview. Anyway, so people are going to the far right. It's kind of an act of self pres I hope this isn't too big for YouTube. Uh, it's kind of an act of self-preservation. If you're watching CNN and the mainstream media, you're not watching anything but propaganda. Every report is like some Karen said the N-word. They ignore Waukesha, Ghislaine Maxwell, Jesse Smollett, and the FBI catching the CIA struggle-snuggling kids. And I was walking last night, as I do, and I thought to myself, what if you had a channel that covered the stuff that the media is scared to cover? And then the next immediate thought was, well, first, you'd be kicked off the mainstream platforms. And to be fair, for your own safety, second, you'd be swatted by the FBI and they would find contraband on a micro SD card that they conveniently brought with them. And, and finally, you'd be deleted in a mugging, quote unquote, gone wrong, but where they don't take your wallet and they don't take your shoes. They just put two to the back of your head with a untraceable 40. Yeah, it's a mugging gone wrong. Sure, sure it is. Anyway, so you can't fight a corrupt government as an individual. I mean, what I said about the FBI, with them, the FBI has a habit of finding contraband on hard drives and micro SD cards because they just walk in with it. You never, you can't fight that. There's, <laughs> you're not going to, I'm going to have my day in court like some old black and white movie with the, that guy from the Christmas movie. It's like, it's not going to happen. You're just going to, you're just going to go to prison for 40 years. That's, that's life in a low trust society. You can't fight a corrupt government as an individual. Thus, the need to get tribal and form advocacy groups. Malicious. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're not going to fight the government. What about you? You're not going to fight the government. We've got like killer drones and we, you know, B-52s will nuke a neighborhood. It's like, Talk to the Vietnamese and the Taliban about um, the long game. So uh, one man's freedom fighter is another man's uh, committer of bad acts. Anyway, if they didn't fear us, they wouldn't need to censor us. And they are censoring us quite a bit. Like 95% of the right of center channels got kicked off YouTube over the past five years. And as a consequence, YouTube is a much more boring place. The right on YouTube now is Andy No. Steven Crowder, Elijah Schaefer, The Blaze, The Rebel, Dave Rubin, Shapiro. That's the right on YouTube. <laughs> Just cutting edge right wing analysis from uh, those, that group. So the worthless controlled right, um, and they're worse than useless because they pe- keep people trapped within this allowable spectrum. Right of center social media helped get Trump elected. And then the puppet masters saw that they we're not going to make that mistake again, which is why YouTube 2016 doesn't look anything like YouTube 2021. And I think, like, even if you're on the left, you're going to look at YouTube current day, you're like, oh, it's just not as fun as it used to be because 
you can't fight with right wingers if they're not there if they're all on odyssey uh gab and discord so here's the primary thing with some of these uh uh, Comiskey Phantom Menace channels as they talk about in this article it's the golden cage for them if you're making a just a tr you know buttload of money talking about Doctor Who you're not going to do anything to mess that up and uh, Gary from uh, Nerdrotic to his credit had on Alex Jones who YouTube kicked off so that's a really risky proposition it's like you're, you know you're inviting the employee who the employer fired back into the office it's not something you're going to be able to do I wouldn't do it more than once. Um, YouTube wants that guy disappeared, and Gary invited him on uh, his platform. That takes a lot of guts. That's kind of a surprising move. Anyway, so in terms of the culture war, the Comiskey Phantom Menace channels do what they can, but the platform doesn't want it. And in a few years from now, criticizing movies and shows like they do, we do, that'll be called hate speech. You think I'm kidding? I'm absolutely not. It already feels like it's moving in that direction when you criticize. Like, the other reason is they use purse puppies to advocate for their propaganda is because you're not, if you criticize the idea, they say, oh, no, you're criticizing the purse puppy. It's like, no, we're criticizing the bad ideas that they're, they're the face of. That's the reason you put a brown face to push your ideas and, you, and you're hiding behind the scenes. You're the man behind the curtains. It's like, quick, get a transfer other kid to... to Make this movie. It's like, oh, you just hate them. You're just istophobe. No, because they're just a tool. We know they're just a tool. They didn't come up with these ideas. You, they're just the the puppet, and you've got your hand up there, you know, up the sock, and you're working the the mouth. It's like people are finally catching on. Is what I'm trying to say. The thing is, um, even as uh, even as mild as Comiskey and Phantom Menace is, and they are, but they are pushing back on the mainstream pop propaganda. They're doing it as delicately as they can, but they are doing it. The puppet masters have a narrative. They use Hollywood, the media, big tech, and the payment processors to push their propaganda. If you stand up and do something as harmless as, say, how bad Doctor Who is, or Star Wars, or comics, you're refuting their narrative in some tiny way. It's as if these channels are sailing the waves, but there are leviathans in the deep waiting. Now, with the quartering or nerdrotic, they just seem like normies who are trapped in this golden cage and are not going to do anything to mess that up. And zero shade from me. They simply don't have free speech on YouTube. But in their defense, I will say that people in their live streams do drop the reddest of red pills. Honestly, it's only a matter of time before YouTube shuts down live stream chats in the comment section. And, you know, there's a reason Odyssey is growing. The thing is, um, there's this growing energy that's pushing a movement. And YouTube, Facebook, Twitter don't want it. So people dog whistle and then they get shut down. But eventually the energy spills over to Gab, Odyssey, Discord, and Telegram. YouTube isn't going the way of MySpace because it has Google backing it. It's going to be the number one video platform for several years but it is going to turn into mostly internet TV, a place where you consume product, but you don't get to interact with it like you did a few years ago. And then I suspect that eventually Odyssey is going to pass it by, which I know seems like a long shot, but people left cable for YouTube years ago for a reason. They will also leave YouTube. I mean, you think back to what YouTube was years ago. There's a reason that it blew up, because it blew up because of what people were doing, and now they're just turning it into CNN with like makeup videos and cat videos and that kind of stuff. And they're, you know, shutting down dislikes is one thing because someone in the comments pointed out it presents a false, it, uh, it's, it's more, it's more evil than it seems because you're only showing likes. It's like, you don't know what the ratio of like to dislike is. So it's, I don't know if it's exactly defamation, but it's, it's no, it's wrong term. It's more like propaganda. you you got a media company who's pushing something or obviously the white house is why they shut it down. Who's pushing some ideas I mean, I hate to use fascists because they like they use they call everything fascist, but it's like when you got big tech on the side of the government and you have Antifa on the side of the government pushing the same narrative, it's like, yeah, they are, I guess, closer to the Hugo Boss types. Um, I mean, like, what is Antifa but the brown shirts for Biden, big tech, and and the media? It's kind of weird how things have shifted around so quickly. It's like as soon as Trump's out of office, they jumped on that. Um, the thing is, my point is, uh, people went to YouTube, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago because of what it was. And if you turn it into just CNN where you're not able to interact and by taking away dislikes, that's a huge part of controlling the narrative. It, like, I don't go to like I, I'll admit I used to go to channels, media channels and political channels um, 
to just downvote and go in the comment section and fight. And so I don't interact with those channels anymore because I know the downvote's not visible, so I'm just not interacting with those channels that, that are coming from like the mainstream media, ABC, CBS, CNN, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm spending more time listening to Odyssey channels. There's a live stream on Odyssey now. Uh, I don't even know if I can name the channel because it's it's wrong thing. Um, 